What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna be giving my thoughts and opinions on Clash at the Castle this year. I must say, in my opinion, this is probably um, one of the better pay per views all year for WWE. Honestly, I love some, uh, not uh, SummerSlam was actually pretty solid, but I love. Uh, WrestleMania Night 1. WrestleMania Night 1 was fantastic. Honestly, this may be up there with WrestleMania Night 1 as one of the best pay-per-views WWE has put on all here. This was fantastic. It had it had some issues that, you know, some things I will address uh, as I talk about it. But overall, the show was great. I enjoyed this from top to bottom. And shout out to all the UK subscribers and everyone that was there in attendance. The UK crowd, they did not disappoint it. All 64,000 of you guys showed up, showed out, and made that show even better. So I just want to say thank you to everyone that was there. Thank you to everyone that was in our live stream on the In the Clutch page, man. It was just a great time. So we got to get into what I was, my thoughts and opinions on the different matches. Now, I know we missed the pre show, but we caught like the tail end of the pre show. I think, uh, I want to say that the uh, the the Street Profits um, and Mad Cat Moss had it. They teamed up with Austin Theory and Alpha Academy, and uh, the Street Profits won. But we caught the end of that. But just catching the end of it in the crowd, how hyped they were for the pre-show, let me know that the main show was going to be great. So I didn't catch that match. But we're going to talk about everything that happened on the main card. Let's get right into it with the first match to start off the show: Bianca Belair, Asuka, and Alexa Bliss versus Damage Con Control. That's their name: Bailey, Io Sky, and Dakota Kai. This match was a solid opener. The crowd was very hot. I love the fact that the UK crowd started doing the Bailey chant that they usually do. And it was crazy because Bailey had no other choice but to play into her character. And she was trying to tell the crowd to shut up. Anytime Bailey got in the match or was involved, they were singing it throughout the entire match. And that's the one thing I can say about you guys. Um, that was in attendance y'all kept the energy for the most part of the show um but y'all kept y'all energy and i love that this match was very enjoyable um it, it it they they were able to keep the crowd going it was the first match of the main card and the one thing i will say about this is the fact that we have an actual somewhat of a division a women's division that don't revolve around four women you know what i'm saying it, it was cool to see all these women go out there and, and and put on a solid show everyone had their showcasing but what really surprised me and i want to talk about this more than anything is bailey pinning bianca belair now i thought i was correct in my prediction that obviously damage control <laughs> is weird calling them that but damage control they were going to win it made sense they lost the tournament so they had to win here and i was thinking maybe they would end up pinning maybe alexa bliss or uh oscar but no bailey pinned bailey pinned the champ and it's looking like they're setting up that match for the next pay-per-view event and i was very surprised by that and normally i'm not a big fan of champions being pinned i'm not granted this is a multi-man match so there was a lot of things that's going on this wasn't a one-on-one -on -one situation i'm normally not a big fan of that but in this situation i can i can kind of i can kind of let it slide or whatnot because granted it, it i guess you could say this was a multi-man well multi-woman match and they're going to be setting up something obviously for the next pay-per-view for a one-on-one -on -one match and i believe the next pay-per-view is extreme rules so maybe it'll be a stipulation to that match who knows but either way i'm looking forward to seeing what uh, bianca and bailey do because uh, i think they're gonna have for them to rekindle their feud again on a one-on-one -on -one basis i think it's gonna be good i think it's gonna be entertaining and i'm looking forward to that so the right team won in damage control and it was a solid match i enjoyed it as a opener all right can we just give a round of applause? If you're watching this, whatever device you're watching this on, just go ahead and give a round of applause for the Intercontinental Championship match between Gunther and Sheamus. Honestly, personally, this 
on a on a wrestling standpoint, I think this match, in my opinion, it, it may be match of the night. It, it it may be match of the night. I, I I wouldn't complain if someone made this match of the night. This was so so good. This easily may have been match of the night. I'm I'm as I think about it more between this and the main event this may be matching the night for me because it was so good i expected it to be good i expected it to be hard hitting i expected it to be brutal and it was fantastic we got all of imperium together now you know what i'm saying everybody that was in imperium they're there uh they came out to the ring i'm not sure the wrestler's name uh comment down below um but he was added um to come you know introduce uh uh gunther or whatnot and you know you had um sheamus and his guys with him or whatnot and they just start brawling outside the ring but gunther and sheamus they just stared each other down the bell wrong and then they got at it when i say it was just brutal like they they were lacerated both of them there's knife chops and and just brutal beatings they were stiff with the elbows and the kicks i'm like this is a fight this is what i want to see it was fantastic it, oh my god if you haven't seen that ic title match go watch it you're gonna be like god damn they are working stiff and i love it every second of it. the crowd was pro sheamus and they loved every second of it crowd was just inner just entertained ultimately the right person won in my opinion i picked gunther uh gunther to win he did retain because you know you want to make him a credible strong ic title so when he drops the belt it's going to be a it's going to mean something but at the end of the match as you can see the welts on sheamus chest back body i think the story they went with was sheamus back was hurt so he couldn't really hit the finish his finish like he wanted to his back were hurt and that's what was able to get uh gunther to capitalize but at the end of the match the crowd gave him a standing ovation and it was a beautiful moment gave me goosebumps this was great i love this match it's hard hitting throughout the entire match it's just brutal it gives me uh, the times where we check out the NXT UK clips and how, for whatever reason, the NXT UK, you guys are super stiff. This is this is all I saw. It was just straight stiff. And I was great. Loved it. Fantastic. Maybe, in, I, I think, as I think about it more, this may be match of the night for me. This was, this was so fantastic. It was so good, bro. All right. Now, the low point of the show, the very low point of the show SmackDown's Women's Championship, Liv Morgan versus Shayna Baszler. Now, I picked Liv to win. I thought it was going to be some shenanigans, but no. Liv Morgan actually won clean. She won clean. There was no shenanigans. Um, the match started off very one-sided. The crowd was kind of dead after the Intercontinental Championship match. And, you know, the crowd wasn't really too, too invested. They didn't get invested until... Liv Morgan start pulling out some of her moves that she practiced with Matt Riddle, her like MMA style moves. Like she was able to get the win on counters. Like she was trying to pull, you know, pull out an arm bar, a triangle choke. I'm like, okay. I mean, I do appreciate the fact that she did go out there and, you know, she didn't give up. So I just, it's just one of those things where it was like, I was really surprised that she beat Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler, the Shayna Baszler that we love from NXT, she beat her legit in the ring. So I don't know what they're doing with this, where they're trying to take this story. Uh, I know Ronda is still in the mix, so it'll be interesting to see what happened there. But hey, kudos to Triple H for at least wanting her to have some of trying to build up a, a decent reign for her. I know some people are now not really caring too much for Liv, but it may be maybe this can be a turn of new things you know i mean granted some people find it hard to believe oh she can beat Shayna baszler but at the end of the day that's the decision that they went with i don't really have too much of a problem with it i do think she will drop the title relatively soon maybe it may be at the next pay-per-view or maybe they want to have her as a long-term champion who knows but ultimately this match wasn't it for me it picked up towards the end um when uh when Liv Morgan started to get some more offense but outside of that it was a one-sided affair it was kind of dull 
I didn't really too much care. And a lot of the people in the chat and in the in the crowd wasn't as excited. But ultimately, Bill Morgan got the win there. So uh, this was probably the lowest point of the show. It wasn't awful, but it's not something I'm gonna go back to watch if I watch this uh, pay per view again. Now, a match that really surprised me and I enjoyed so so much, Ray and Edge and Ray Mysterio versus uh, the Judgment Day, Finn Balor, Damian Priest, and of course. Rhea Ripley was uh, out there and if you watch the chat or was watching the live stream oh it was so great to see uh, Rhea Ripley get some just uh, some justice you know what I'm saying um first things first I gotta talk about Edge coming out there with the Rey Mysterio oh not Rey Mysterio match but the Luchador match I thought that was a pretty cool touch um this match was fun crowd was super pro edge i mean they loved edge it was fantastic to see they love ray you know dominic was out there as well but edge was the main the main event and um i want to talk about the ending sequence because that's what everyone is really focusing on so we're thinking all right dominic is gonna at some point get involved i'm thinking maybe he's gonna cause them to lose the match right cause our ray and edge to lose the match actually dominic was doing the the decoy like he was distracting the ref which allowed edge and ray mysterio to capitalize on a fin it was like a it was a nice exchange i, I also want to give a a, a a nice little highlight to edge hitting the 619 that was pretty cool to see but it, it was giving the open opportunity for edge and Rey Mysterio to get the dub, bro. Oh, bro. It, 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 was, it was a nice, beautiful moment. That spear that Edge hit on Finn Balor was fan-fucking-tastic, bro. It looked brutal as hell. Um, and he got the 1-2-3 pin, right? Oh, and I got to talk about this moment, too. So, obviously, Rhea Ripley is doing Rhea Ripley things. Rhea Ripley starts beating the crap out of Dominic, which was starting to piss me off. I'm like, bro, Dominic is getting manhandled, legit outside. Ray comes out there and says, screw that. Dives on to Rhea and Dominic, which causes Rhea to hit the, uh, the, the guardrail, which I was like, yes, finally, equal rights, equal fights. I love it, man. This is this was so great just to see that moment ultimately you know finn balor was you know distracted by it and edge was able to hit the beautiful spear on on finn balor so after this everybody's celebrating it's a, it's a good feel moment crowd's loving it all of a sudden dominic kicks edge with a low blow just kicks him straight in the jewels ray's like yo what the f what are you doing son what what are you doing and then all of a sudden, Dominic decides to clothesline Ray Mysterio, his own pops. You got the Judgment Day on the ring apron laughing after they lost, but they're laughing at them. And everyone's just booing Dominic. I mean, giving him good, good heat. I'm talking about booing the crap out of him. I was shocked that they... I had a feeling they were going to probably turn him heel because it, it, the setup was there. I was still somewhat shocked on how they pulled it off. I honestly thought the heel turn was going to come from Dominic screwing over Edge and and uh, and his dad. But he helped them win only to screw them over in the end to turn, it, turn his back on them in the end. And I like that. And I want to see what they do with him. This is their opportunity because I think we can all agree. Dominic as a face doesn't work. No one, he doesn't have that charisma. He doesn't have that character. No one buys into it. No one cares. No one cares about Dominic as a face. But as a heel against a beloved Rey Mysterio, I think that could do something. I think that could be something. So if they book it right, and if he's able to really get into his, his evil bag, we may actually start caring about Dominic, and I'm all for it. So I'm glad they did the heel turn. Um, it's it's going to be interesting to see what they do going forward. But I enjoyed this match. The ending was exciting. I love the heel turn. This was a very, very, very good match. Go watch this tag match. It was fun. You definitely will enjoy it. Now, the match that a lot of us 
anticipated. A lot of us was waiting to see Seth Rollins versus Matt Riddle. I was not expecting them to actually have a actual wrestling match. And God dang it, it was great. This match was fantastic. This match was so damn good, bro. So many near falls. The one near fall that got me was the the uh, the pedigree. And Matt Riddle just barely getting his shoulder up when he hit the pedigree. I'm like, oh, bro, this is... This is just great. The the it's like they I like how they would counter each other moves. Like it, uh, Seth Rollins would go for the top uh, top rope. Uh, I want to say it's like a I'm not sure if it's a suplex, but he go basically when he hits the Falcon Arrow, like goes to the top rope, and hits it, and then he goes into the Falcon Arrow. But obviously Matt Riddle knows that, so he was able to counter it. I also love the nods to Randy Orton with hitting Matt Riddle with the second row DDT and also doing the little Viper pose to attack Matt Riddle with an RKO. I love the back and forth on that. I also love the fact that Seth Rollins is such a rogue son of a you-know-what. He was still talking trash. He's like, bro, you're a loser. That's why your wife left you. That's why your kids don't want to be around you. I'm like, bro, He's getting in his head, and this was what it, I, I loved about that whole little interaction. Because at this point, Matt Riddle loses it. He loses his composure. Seth Rollins knows this. He starts giving Seth Rollins the beats. He literally goes out there. He's about to get disqualified, which I'm all for. <laughs> He's about to get disqualified. He goes out there, gets a steel chair, and about to, like, in Seth Rollins' career. And this is after he didn't bash Seth Rollins' head into the announce table <laughs> over and over and over. He's about to end him. He misses, gets back into the ring, and then uh, he ends up getting caught. And this wasn't even just no regular um, curb stomp. Seth Rollins goes to the second rope, extra hype, hits the curb stomp on Matt Riddle, wins it clean, one, two, three. It, Seth didn't cheat. He wins it clean. But this ain't over. I don't want this to be over. This does not need to be over. Matt Riddle needs to get his, 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 his he, he has to get this win in this view. I knew they were going to give it to Seth because Seth needs a pay-per-view win. He definitely needs a pay-per-view win at this point. So this was, this was good in a sense of at least starting off a feud or for the most part with the win. So I'm okay with that. They need to extend this. Extreme Rules is the next pay-per-view. This needs to be some type of stipulation. I, this needs to. This calls for it. They had a regular match. I know Matt Riddle is not done with him. If I'm Matt Riddle, I see him on Monday Night Raw. The stuff you said, I'm going to get my pound of flesh before he can even finish like a promo. Matt Riddle is attacking him. Puts him in this, like a chokehold. They have to get referees out there. Like, I'm not done with you, bro. We're going to either have a hell in a cell. We're going to have like a... Uh, um, a falls count anywhere match. It, we need to go extreme. We need to have a first uh, uh, a tables match, a fire on set on fire table match. Whoever falls through the flaming table <laughs> loses. We we need to have a flaming table match. Let's get it going. Come on, Triple H. They they hate each other. I'm pretty sure one of them would love to see the other one in a flaming table. But yeah, man, I enjoyed this match. This was really good. I thought it was gonna be some type of screwy finish or a disqualification, but they had a legit. Full match, enjoyed it. Go watch it. You will definitely enjoy it as well. And the crowd was into this. This was fantastic. Um, and finally, the main event, the Unspeeded WWE Universal Championship match between Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre. Where do we begin? So first and foremost, we have to talk about Drew's pre-entrance. What they did was they had the Titantron show his uh his um his old entrance the broken dreams entrance and what was cool about that is the fact that them using a broken dreams entrance getting the crowd high going through the the visual you know titantron package and then him coming out to his uh his or his uh his uh, entrance that he has now it was it was it was a nice way to let the fans know like i know you know obviously people knew 
like the WWE, they, you know, everybody knew what was being said on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Like, we want to see broken dreams. It only makes sense. So the fact that they did that, but he didn't come out to it, it was just a pre-intro to his his entrance, was a cool, nice little nod and gesture uh, that WWE did for the fans, and I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, what can I say about this match, man? This was This was fun. This was fucking fun. This I had a I was on an emotional roller coaster because I did not know what was going to happen. It had a big fight feel. The crowd. This was one of the first times in a long time the crowd was anti-Roman. This was all Drew the entire time. Roman came out there by himself. No Usos, no Paul Heyman, but he wasn't really by himself. Earlier in the show, Tyson Fury was talking to Roman there was a segment of just them talking in the back that was it don't know what they were talking about but he was talking in the back Tyson Fury sitting like front row behind the commentators booth whatever that plays into later on in the match so match is getting on the way it was slow it was it, people were hyped but Roman Roman knows how to slow down a match make it methodical and then waits for the baby face to try to get that comeback and that's literally what it was there was one point he kicked out of one spear i'm like all right cool i thought it, you know, it looked like it was almost over but all right cool he kicked out of it was, they were like running the ropes and he kicked out of a second spear i was like oh it gotta be over that almost got me like this i'm sure this this may be it nope he kicked out of two i was like okay this is this is just truly insane right now like it was getting better it's like there was levels to the excitement of what was happening in the ring bro um of course you knew there was going to be at some point a uh a guillotine spot and you know drew was gonna fight out of that crowd was getting hyped and then a the referee spot i knew it was gonna be some type of shenanigans with the referee spot um Drew ends up setting up for the Claymore and the ref ends up getting knocked or whatnot. And when I say, bro, it was it was just you didn't know what was gonna happen. Once that happened, then you had uh Austin Theory come down, run down the ramp with a referee, crowds going crazy. I'm like, bro, is he gonna cash in? And this is where Tyson Fury comes into play. He was by the timekeeper's area, he's about to cash in. Tyson Fury. Uh, knocks out Austin Theory, sends him to the gulags. It's like every time Ty uh, Austin Theory tries to cash in, he just gets sent right back to the gulags. It was a funny moment. So this is the moment right here for me where for the first time in a very long time, it, I think in the first time, I think in Roman Reigns' entire this run he's had now, I actually thought Roman was about to lose. So everybody's down everybody's down and out even austin theory down and out they end up setting up uh, you know they end up getting back into it and drew mcintyre hits roman reigns with a fucking spear bro he hits him with his own fucking finisher and i'm like oh shit this is it this is it. And then he ends up hitting him with the Claymore. I'm like, oh my God. This is it. He, he's about to win. There was no one else there. No one else there. No one by ringside or whatnot. I'm like, bro, this is it. He's about he's about to win. The only the, the other referee that was that came out with Austin Theory, he was there. I'm like, okay, this is it. This is it. One. Two. I'm losing my shit at this point. I'm like, bro, he's about to fucking overcome the odds. They're going to pull an audible. Right when he's about to hit three, the ref gets pulled out. You see the hooded figure. And I was like, oh, that's that's the Usos brother. Solo Seeker, man. He comes out. He's shaking his head. He takes his hood off. He's shaking his head. Everyone's shocked. Drew tries to attack him, but ultimately had his back uh, turned to Roman. Roman ends up capitalizing, of course. And uh, Roman ends up... Uh, Winning the match, man. One, two, three. Of course, screwy finish. But now we have the introduction of the Usos brother, younger brother, Solo Sika, 
which makes sense now the bloodline is even stronger and i'm not gonna lie to you i enjoyed this match so much i enjoyed this more than i expected to because i didn't know what was gonna happen and i know there's some people that are like oh this sucks it's the same thing with roman is just now it's somebody different i get it i understand i understand ultimately the end goal i think is cody i think cody is the end goal and i've been saying this as long as the usos have the titles they're not roman's not losing once the usos drop them titles then and only then that's when things start that's when the dissension of the bloodline happens once the usos drop the straps the dissension of the bloodline will start to happen. Best believe. That's the one reason that I was like, it only makes sense if Roman wins because if Roman loses the title, but his brother, his cousins still have theirs, doesn't, doesn't make him the head of the table. Now, does it? He don't have championship. His gimmick relies on him having a championship at this point. So, I know that's where they want to take this story. Cody Rose being potentially the one to take the titles off of him now you are probably asking damn how they're gonna build up interesting matches all the way to the royal rumble well we don't know when cody will return he may return sooner who knows but ultimately either for me personally the the right person won would i have gotten mad if drew would have won no i probably would have marked out and lost my shit because i would have been so surprised but either way they put on a very good match and it was an emotional roller coaster i loved it now we have solo seeker into the mix i want to see what's going to happen on smackdown how things are going to play out this also has me excited for monday night raw as well with some of these storylines potentially leading into extreme rules man but hey i enjoyed this pay-per-view bro this is so fucking fun this was very very fun i know i didn't go into great detail on what happened in every single match only because there's just so many things that happened on this show and i'm still trying to actually process and remember offhand but this was great my voice you could probably tell is hoarse because i just i was losing my shit man this was so fun bro and to think i'm going off of like three hours of sleep and this show brought me so much life and energy bro this is great oh also i wanted to mention karen cross was out there ringside there was a little brief interaction with karen cross and drew but and nothing really happened physically and i like that i like he didn't insert himself into the match i can appreciate that that was cool i i like that a lot they just teased it he's just there in the background i do believe karen cross and drew mcintyre will probably end up feuding very very soon so it will be interesting to see how that plays out but ultimately man fun show great show fantastic show if i can rate the show on a scale of one to ten this is a cool nine this was a 9 out of 10 show. The only way this could have been a 10 out of 10 if the women's match was a little bit better. And if they would have pulled a shock factor and gave Drew the title, I would have given this a 10 out of 10. Off the shock factor alone and like holy shit type moment. But ultimately, Roman ends up winning again, you know, in similar fashion. But the match itself was so fun and so good. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't knock it down you know th it was a very fun match and um, it got me interested to see what happens in the future with the bloodline so yeah nine out of ten show for me so comment down below let me know what was your favorite match from uh the clash at the castle what you rate this pay-per-view on a scale of one to ten man and what are you most looking forward to in these upcoming weeks man what, what you think is going to happen with uh the bloodline how things are going to play out with that um what's going to happen between bianca and um bailey and how things are going to play out between matt riddle and seth rollins where do you think things these storylines are going to head into extreme rules let me know down below i appreciate all love and support row two i appreciate talking with me see you on the next one peace